Hello, this is Saul Luckman. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Conversations on Saul Luckman Uncensored, sponsored by snoozetoawaken.com, resources for lucidity. For more information about my work, including a lot of fantastic free content, check out www.crowrising.com. I'm also now on Telegram, where I'm sharing daily truth bombs at t.me slash Saul Luckman. Today, for the first time, I have my friend and someone I consider a mentor, Dr. Bear Lando, with me. Dr. Bear hardly needs an introduction. He's a veritable legend in the alternative health sphere, but just in case you've been hiding under a rock during the pandemic, when he's been very vocal, here's a snippet of his impressive background. As founder and formulator for Alpha Vedic at alphavedic.com, Dr. Bear Lando traveled an eclectic path through athletics and academics and becoming a physician, bioterrain specialist, and permaculture farmer. I'm very jealous. He is noted among his peers for his innovative clinical strategies and developed an international following for people suffering from chronic degenerative conditions, seeking his services as a bioterrain medicine and functional movement specialist. In more recent years, he earned his Master Gardener in Permaculture Design Certification and presently oversees his off-grid medicinal herb farm while teaching biodynamic farming methods and ionization soil analysis. Now retired from clinical medical practice, he remains active in the internal martial arts, health consulting, creating formulations for his herbal company and developing innovative medical protocols based on the principles of waveform physics. Welcome to Saul Luckman Uncensored, Dr. Bear. Thanks for being with us today. I'd re I've really been looking forward to this conversation and I know that wherever we take this, there's gonna be some serious breadcrumbs of truth that people can follow, not just for themselves, but for our struggling planet. Thanks for being here again. Well, I'm honored to be here. And uh, we have such great uh, lengthy conversations just between you and I behind the scenes that uh, it's really fun to get a whole uh, get together with you today. So I've been looking forward to this. Right Thank on, you. right on. I was making some notes yesterday and I was thinking, I mean, you know, there's so, so many directions we could we could go here. And I'm just going to start with where my notes started and we'll just see where all this stuff takes us. And the first thing I'd like to get your, your take on and have a little conversation with you about is Dr. Robert Malone. Are you familiar with him and his work and how he's been in the news recently? I am aware. And um, as I typically do, you know, I keep my ear to the ground, get the gist of things um, without getting too much into the weeds because I've got a lot going on on this end, but I know he's uh, creating quite a stir. So good for him. Yeah, right. So so he he went on Joe Rogan, right? And he um, he basically came out with this assertion that the planet is suffering from mass formation psychosis. And this is not actually new. There have been, you know, Dr. Mercola has been writing about this throughout the, the pandemic. Um, and other people have had a lot to say on this subject, but it just so happened to hit the right moment with Joe Rogan and it went public. And now you've got these fact checkers out there saying there is no such thing as mass formation psychosis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I wanted to get your take on, on his, his diagnosis of the planet, if you will. Well, I've been uh, observing that phenomena going on for quite a few years. You know, I began this journey uh, jumping down rabbit holes about 40 years ago. Uh, you know, when I first went into medicine and uh, got my eyes open by working in the conventional system, I um, was taken under the wing of some uh, prominent people there that uh, clued me into what the AMA and uh, Big Pharma is really about. And, and, and then that led to me investigating into a lot of area, uh, other areas, including, uh, you know, banking and legal versus law and, and everything we talk about. And what I found was just even trying to talk about, um, you know, pretty mundane things with people concerning like maybe the banking system isn't all on the up and up. Uh -huh. And maybe it's, a, a, you know, the most pernicious uh, uh, system of slave tra trafficking in the history of the world. Uh, you know, of course, I couch it a little bit more tactfully, but people couldn't even wrap their minds around that because they're in such a hypnosis that, uh, you know, these sorts of things can't go on. People wouldn't do that 
to us. How could they accomplish that? There'd be too many people in on it. And, um, you know, it, it's just a tough sell, uh, you know, when you go out and tell the truth. And now uh, we've escalated to the point we're at in uh, well over 20, oh shoot, 30 years ago, we were telling people that there is going to be um, a biological false flag event that they will then uh, use as a pretense for establishing uh, the, con uh, the consolidation of power and also to bring us under, uh, you know, obviously more control and also to call uh, the herds, so to speak. And so we've been crying wolf for a long time. And here we are. The only thing that surprises me, I really didn't think we'd be um, hypnotized enough in, in order to get here. It's just, it's just astounding that some people are still asleep. But the good thing, you know, you, you mentioned that Dr. Malone has hit a chord out there. And I believe it's really time people are waking up and people like Joe Rogan, even though I don't agree with everything he says, uh, they're doing an amazing job and they're actually kicking the holy you know what out of the legacy media in the numbers that they're drawing. And it's just increasingly making the legacy media, uh, you know, more irrelevant by the day. So it's a joy to see. Well, right on. I, I, I do link to um, to uh, Malone on this topic on my blog. It's news to awaken dot com. Uh, so you can you can check that out. I'll put that in our show notes for people to to have a look at. You know, I left a, a message for him over on Getter and maybe a couple of other places. I'm like, you know, Joe, you know, cut the uh, germ theory bullshit. And why don't you interview people like Dr. Bear Lando, Dr. Andrew Kaufman, uh, Stefan Lanka, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, I'm really out there trying to put pressure on people in whatever small way I can to, to expand this conversation and get out, out of this. Uh, what strikes me is increasingly almost uh, controlled opposition-like behavior. And I see that even with Dr. Robert Malone, I don't want to put you on the spot, you know, <laughs> talking about a colleague, but here you have the inventor of mRNA. You've got, this guy is a, a, a just a dyed in the wool, unrepentant germ theorist. He's got Omicron on the brain. Now he's talking about this virus coming, this uh, Ebola-like virus moving through Africa, possibly headed this way. Uh, he's pushing his own vaccines. I mean, if this guy is not controlled opposition, what is he? How does he even? Yeah. Can, how does he even get put forward in that way? And you know, and what role is a Joe Rogan playing in this psychodrama being played out on on the larger stage? I just don't trust anybody in these larger positions anymore, even if they seem like they got there organically. It doesn't matter what side they pander to, um, as long as they keep you in the same box. Uh, I have a hard time believing that people as learned and intelligent as some of these people were mentioning um, still don't know. Uh, you know, I was just a lone doctor for Amen. many years doing what I did with uh, looking at my microscope every day. And I proved to myself, uh, along with, um, you know, practically applying what I saw under the microscope and with other things I did to clinical medicine and the uh, results spoke to them, uh, you know, for themselves. So I was able to prove it out. I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm a lone person. I don't have, uh, you know, billion dollars of uh, research facilities and technologies and staffs at my disposal and research grants. So don't tell me that they still believe what they're saying. Um, there's even some pretty prominent people, and I'm purposely not going to mention names, but they're, they become sort of the darlings of um, alternative medicine, and they're doing the same thing. They're talking about virums. They wax on very eloquently, uh, you know, about the, the resonance between the virums and, and uh, you know, I'll humanity. I'll mention a name for you. How, how about Zach Bush? Uh, I didn't say it, but yeah, <laughs> come to think of it, just possibly, you know, um, you know, and there's uh, a lot of other folks out there doing the same thing. So if I want to give anybody the benefit of the doubt, I say, all right, they are maybe doing that because they believe that they'll lose all credibility if they just come out and say 
you know, viruses uh, don't exist, germs don't cause disease. In fact, the whole concept of disease is, is off base in the first place. So maybe they're trying to retain that credibility in order to have a wider listening audience and then maybe two-step that audience into a, um, you know, maybe a deeper understanding. But the problem I have with that, and forgive the background noise, that'll stop in a second. Uh, the problem I have with that is when are we going to be considered adult enough to um, hear the pure, unadulterated truth? And I personally, I could be wrong, but I think we're just flat out of time for doing the two-step. I think we have to jump in both feet with the truth and know exactly what's going on because, you know, we have an audience ourselves, as do you, and our audiences are more than ready to hear it. And when these uh, kind of um, fence sitters, you know, come in, they, they get pretty much called to task when they do that nonsense. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot to unpack there. Um, so a question for you, and I, I'll, I'll go back in a moment and, and cover some other ground here, but do you think it's possible then to exit this pandemic while a lot of people are still embracing germ theory? I think it's on an individual basis. And uh, the answer would be yes, absolutely but you can't wait for the rest of the herd to do it. What we have to do is each individual that has, you know, uh, eyes to see has to make that decision, act boldly upon it. And, uh, you know, again, go, go with both feet into the truth. And then that is going to contribute to the critical mass that I believe we're about, you know, uh, a nanometer away from and when that next person, you know, embraces the truth, that is going to be the energetic event that will turn the whole tide. So I think we're a lot closer to shifting this whole thing than people might believe. And of course, I believe also the, um, the would-be controllers, the media, and all their uh, arms of disinformation understand this as well, and, and maybe even better than anybody. That is why they're taking such desperate, ludicrous actions right now and just exposing themselves in the process.